at powerpopaholic.com. And I have the pleasure and honor of talking to the great Parthenon Huxley, uh, not only a great uh, solo artist, but also played in the orchestra, Yellow 2, and, uh, you know, produced many uh, albums with, uh, you know, great uh, artists, you know, like Kyle Vincent and more. So uh, he just came out with a new album. Um, how are you doing today, P. Hux? <laughs> I'm doing well. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, things are good. Let's talk okay. about your new album, As Good As Advertised. Now, that just came out. That was done through um, a uh, sort of a self-funding thing. I think the last few albums you've you've had have been sort of fan-based, self-funded. Well, I, I've used, you know, I, you know, the artist Blue, B-L-E-U. Yes, absolutely. I, I saw his Kickstarter video about 12 years ago, whatever it was. And it was really funny, really well done. Yes. And it just made me kind of like, oh, this is this is entertaining and cool. And I and I I worked for a year on setting up my own Kickstarter thing, and I did it for this album called Thank You Bethesda. And I, you know, launched it on my daughter's birthday, did all this superstitious stuff. It 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 felt like, you know, asking for money always feels like begging, even though it's not. We're just you, right. know, you can contribute if you want. The, the first morning I had like four hundred dollars in 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 the in the pot after an hour. <laughs> so I you know and I made I'd got about sixteen thousand dollars that first time. The second time for uh, this is the one. About five years later I did it again. I got about eighteen thousand. And this past time, I finally learned that you have to keep on <laughs> keep on reaching out to the people. Yeah, pr constant promotion is always constant promotion, which yeah. I'm super uncomfortable with and and have always disliked. But it's. I'm getting over myself and I, I got up to about $34,000 this time, which is almost a real record budget, you know? So I feel All like right. in these, in these days, you know, we make $400,000 records for about 25. Well, it's fair that you're able to at least get your music out to the fans and, you know, the fans are, you know, always wanting more. Uh, so it, it's good to see that you're, you're so creative and, and keeping up with things with that. So let's talk a little bit about the album. Um, you know, I thought I listened to the whole thing. I thought as good as advertised was really good. It's, it is a little bit, um, you know, there's a little bit of sadness tinged to a lot of the songs, you know, it's not, um, your, your typical, uh, sunny, uh, bright power pop type of thing. Um, and, uh, but there's still, I can still hear some of that ELO influence throughout, you know, especially on the song uh, "Bitter Tears." That one, well, that one's got strings, so it's, yeah, it's yeah, kind of an easy tell. But yeah, <laughs> um, I think you know that exuberant power pop thing. You know, I'm 67. <laughs> you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not that fresh young 40 year old I was a few years ago. <laughs> and um, but I think the album is. It's I like it that it's a little different, and um, and I think the music is still exuberant, even if some of the subject matter can be a little dour, but um, songs like Mr. Black Sky, you know, which is about tyrannical behavior. And, um, but I think um, there's, there's still some, I think there's still a lot of love in the album, like, uh, but Sad About the Boy, which is talking about, you know, a dad trying to talk to his daughter. These are all, I always write about my life because it's just what I've done. And, and, and that's where I get the most feeling from. Sure. And um, so whatever is going on in my life gets Put into the record you know so i have to tell you i uh my favorite song on the album is the ballad this song reminds me of you it just oh wow so beautiful it's a it just builds itself up and into this you know it's it's the most loving song i've heard uh on that album and it, it's really beautiful intricate guitar work also on the title track beautiful intricate guitar work um, that's weaved in there. It, it's, uh, I think it's wonderful. I think the biggest challenge for people who don't know much about you is finding some of this new music and being able to hear what it sounds like. I think on Spotify, you have a, Beth a thank you Bethesda. Um, and then that's pretty much, and maybe an older album prior to that, but no, the thing about Spotify is, and I made the mistake of calling that record by Parthenon Huxley instead of P Hux. Mm, yeah. So they can't figure out that I'm the same person. Uh, the the <laughs> the um, what do you call it? The uh, not uh, what's the word for the the logarithm? Whatever. 
Yeah, right? the the algorithm. The algorithm. So yeah. it can't it can't figure out that I'm the same person. So I'm gonna have to re I'm gonna have to re, do come up with a new cover for Thank You Bethesda. Call it by P Hux <laughs> to get it on the same page with the other records because I do have right. about three or four other records on Spotify. But if you punch in Parthen and Huxley, you'll never see them. So, um, but people can always go to my site, even though I know sites are not anybody's first choice anymore. It's it's you can always find all my stuff there. Okay, great. So um, we will definitely be looking for that as well as going through some of, you know, seeing if we can uh, I'll pick up some of your roll albums, actually, some of the ones that I haven't heard, you know, some of those uh, bonus track type things that you have up there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but let's uh, switch gears slightly to uh, the or- um, the orchestra. Are you still uh, touring a little bit off and on with them? Um, we don't really tour so much anymore as we do flyouts. You know, we- we'll do a couple of shows like <clears throat> we did four shows in South America this spring. We've got two shows in Pennsylvania coming up at the end of this month. Um, we're not really ever on a bus anymore, you know, playing all the sheds or doing anything like that. Sure. Um, we're not going back to Russia anytime soon or Ukraine, <laughs> yeah, um, that makes sense. but, um, they're looking at South America for the spring and, and, uh, you know, we do on and off these domestic shows and it's just still such a privilege. I, I, I joined them 25 years ago and right. I get to, I get to hang out with a gang of men, you know, about 25 times a year and, and laugh and have a great time and be a great band and make people happy and, um, it's just, uh, it's a real privilege. It's a really nice thing to have in my life. So uh, I guess one of the, uh, Nick Kaminsky still, um, part yep. of the band, correct? He's still there. He's still hanging on, still doing the violin. Yep. Playing yeah. as good as ever. Uh, so when, I just want to ask a quick question about when you started with the orchestra. So when you started, you basically had all the original members of ELO at that point, right? No, it was ELO part two, which was a successor group to ELO. Uh, and it had Bev Bevan, the drummer, Kelly Groka on bass, Mick Kaminsky on violin, and Lou Clark on orchestral uh, keyboards. Right. And he would conduct when we played with orchestra. So that was four guys from who were on all the records, basically. Uh, you know, the not the first one or the couple last ones, but basically right. for the meat of the ELO catalog, these were right. all guys who played on the records. And Richard Tandy was not in the band and Jeff was not in the band. I took, I was in the Jeff spot and a guy named Eric Troyer was in the keyboard right. spot. So it was, you know, it was um, two thirds uh, British, like it should be. Mm-hmm. And over the course of the last 25 years, like in any car, you have to replace some parts or any job, you've got to replace some ex-CEOs. And now we're, um, now we're two English people and five Americans. So <laughs> This this would make them howl with protest in, in, in the beginning. But, um, you know, now it's just what it is. It, it's uh, it's a band that's been around for a long, long time. And and um, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and you guys sound great. I saw the show when you were in, uh, you know, on Long Island. Uh, I think it was two years ago. And it was phenomenal. And, and you guys sound so crisp. Every note is exactly as what everyone wants to hear. And it's amazing. So tell me a a little, let's go back to the album again. Um, So one thing song that I liked about the album that I thought had kind of two meanings was the song uh, human again. Is that about music obsession? (laughs) Oh, that's interesting. Uh, No, no. Um, Okay. Tell me a little bit about what, what human again is about. Munich music obsession. Um, (laughs) No, it's about, um, I never wanted to write a song about COVID because I was mad at COVID, but I still right. couldn't help it because it's part of my life. Right. So won't it feel good to be human again is is that, you know, when we're all locked locked down and mm-hmm. and um I think um I've been playing blue, I've been gazing shoes, I've been playing blues, I've been thinking to myself so long, been so out of touch, miss my life so much. You know, it's all about being trapped. And right. um, and then um, people kissing cheeks. Oh, you crazy freaks is like you're touching each other, you know. <laughs> All so, right. I mean, you know, we it's funny how we've dropped the mask and dropped the terror and dropped the front page news. It just it went away. It seems to me really quickly. Yeah, it, it uh, seems to be sort of like, oh, uh, uh, only 100 people are dying, not 1000. OK, it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> yeah, now it's now it's folded into the normal numbers. But I mean, we hated it so much. 
I think everybody was so delighted to not have it be question number one, you know, and, and, and the first thing you think about when you leave your house, you know? Right. No, uh, I think, I think that's the well put, well put. So, um, also on the album, I also liked, uh, you know, rainbow, which is beautiful song, even, you know, the lyrics coming a little later, but it just, another song that just builds up and builds up really nicely and swells and, and to a great chorus and all. And, um, is there any, I'm, I'm going to ask as part as, you know, your older albums, is there anything that you ever considered sort of re revisiting and redoing and sort of updating? Um, there's a song on sunny nights, my record I did with Columbia that has, uh, it's called double our numbers, which I wrote in my twenties. And, um, it kind of got in the eighties, it kind of got the drum drum machine and synth treatment. Right. A little bit, a little bit too much to my taste. There's guitars on it, and uh, but it should be just a guitar song, um, or maybe you know with some groovy keyboards instead of synths on it. But um, that's one that I'd like to do. Uh, and people have said, boy, that'd be a great country song too, because it's kind of got this rapid story going on. Um, and I'd like to hear a country version of it too. But um, most of my records, I'd say, actually all my records. I stand behind how they sound. I stand behind what they are. Uh, it's the one thing in my life that I commit myself to completely. Um, the finished product of an album is a real personal statement for me, and I don't let anything go out unless I'm completely happy with it. Yes, um, you are so, quite a perfectionist. That I noticed. Yeah, it's uh, and like um, that song Rainbow that you like so much. I think that's the best song in the new album. I really do. I, it just gives me such pleasure. It's such a great recording. The band killed it. And it's a little jazzy. It's a little different from what I normally do. There's a couple jazzy things on the new record, which I obviously is uh, to my uh, speaks to my new maturity. Yes, that's <laughs> I that's. Think, I think you have to like jazz once you reach your sixties, right? Yeah, it's it's another thing that it leads me into my next question, really, which was, you know, um, are you exploring like really going off into a completely different genre at one point? I know Chris Stamey has done that. I mean, he literally went from rock to pop to orchestral standards <laughs> before yeah. he went back to rock and roll. I, I don't think I'm doing anything as deliberate as that. And, and I get my fill of the orchestral stuff with the orchestra. Um, no, I, I still just write, I write songs almost every day or at least put down ideas on my phone, you know, something. And uh, the good ones stick around, the good ones stick around and they deserve the work they get done on them. I'm not, so I don't really know what the direction is that I'm going in the only the only um criteria is do i like it you know i mean it's literally that simple it's like oh this is cool you know like i could develop this into something and then the more i do it it holds up it starts to get better and better it's a sturdy little thing now some of them fall apart like oh, that bridge never worked the chorus still doesn't work and i have 10 songs that didn't make this album you know that just were right. un unstable at some point because it's got to be it's got to be great from beginning to end and and that's the only way it gets passed so um so there's no real conscious thing of the direction. I, I uh, part of the jazzy things probably were. Um, um, oh, the, the the one jazzy song is called uh, "I'm Not Going to Be My Number," and that that's the first time I've I've created a song where I said, you know how in jazz it's like you state the theme, everybody improvises, and then you right. state the theme again, and you're out. Right. You know, it's, there's that form, and I said I've never done anything like that. I'd like to do one of those where do the thing. Everybody gets to play for longer than usual, not a concise pop solo, you know, right. But a long, like, go ahead. <laughs> and this is taken from our live shows too, because I always encourage, you know, if my keyboard player is doing a solo, I just tell, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep yeah. going, you know? And, uh, and I like to take, I like to stretch when you have a band that can stretch, it's super fun. So that's what that song was. And that was a deliberate idea of doing something that I'd never done before. So there is that one, but, um, Okay. Um, so uh, also what are, I wanted to find out also, what are you listening to right now? Or what is, what do you listen to, you know, in your off hours? What do you enjoy listening to? Um, I have musician's disease, so I'm always thinking about my stuff. <laughs> it's always in my head or I'm always working on stuff and musicians are the worst fans because we just, you know, I'm busy. But um, I've been listening to a lot of Mike Viola, especially because I wanted to, before the show I did so I could, know what he was doing 
And then after I saw him play it live, I just, I, I've gone back in and I've taught several of his songs to my guitar students. So I knew what he was kind of up to, but I didn't realize he was so good live. Um, singing and playing and being a human and being funny and he was great um oh yeah he has a whole shtick that just is wonderful i just love him i i love his i love his stuff i love the way he is um but also i have a, a wife who used to be a music supervisor so she's playing her stuff all the time all this really cool sort of indie rock and then i have my daughters who are playing all the hip stuff that the girls the teenage girls love these days like you know um boy genius and all that stuff um so there's a lot of music in the house i almost don't really have to pull out my old shit <laughs> you know or you just have to walk into a room basically just right? walk into a room and i'll hear something i haven't heard before and and also my students bring me songs by bands that i've never heard of who have 500 million you know views <laughs> and um so i get to learn some new songs that way so i i don't i don't feel like i'm missing a whole lot right now just by osmosis almost you know very nice, very nice. Well, um, I uh, we're almost out of time here, so thank you so much, uh, Parthenon Huxley, for uh, talking with me and chatting about this. And uh, if people want to find your uh, albums, where do they go to? ParthenonHuxley.com. Very P A R T H E N O N H U X L E Y. Yeah, it's um, strangely no one else wanted that site. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thanks again for the interview. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you when you eventually come back to the States and do another tour. Come back to New York. We love you. I will. Love to. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Bye.